Welcome to MapNetter 2. Um, we're just going to do a quick walkthrough here. Um, so here's uh, the MapNetter 2 front page. Uh, I have already logged in and I, we really recommend that people do log in uh, because then you get to see a listing of the maps that you've created, uh, but it's not 100% required. So um, I, I'm going to click create a map and you get to this page which um, shows you a map of the world. Um, you have to give your map a title. Uh, I'm going to call mine uh, Landfill Kite Mapping because I'm going to use some imagery that is of the Saugus uh, Landfill in Massachusetts. And what you can do is actually it'll auto-complete um, places. Uh, so you can type it in there and it'll get the longitude and latitude and zoom you in. So we're just trying to find where that map was made. I mean, I was there that day, and I, I know the location. Sometimes it can be hard to find. Um, you can swap to OpenStreetMap, and you'll get labels. Uh, that can help to find the location. I happen to sort of recognize this one. Here's the landfill. And the map that we made is, uh, we, we actually were right around here in, in uh, a couple cars. This is a few years ago. We flew a kite out over the landfill, so we photographed a lot of this area. Um, I could, uh, for example, here put a link to a public lab research note describing what we did, or I could write about that here. I'm going to go ahead and create this map. And it, ref it refreshes this page and fills in the details you just entered. Uh, it also gives you a little heads up and tells you where you can begin. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is upload an image. Um, and so I'm going to swap over to, to this uh, view here. And uh, this is pretty common. You know, I, we had about eight, we had 831 images for this map. And there's a lot of different images. A lot of them good, a lot of them bad. I've marked a couple of good ones. But just so you know the process a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and just sort through a few of these. You'll notice some of them are blurry. Some of them are not so great. Uh, they're tilted or whatever. Yeah, tilted way out of the out of the way. But there's so many pictures that we can we can pretty quickly find some that are better, right? This is one that I actually marked. That's really quite nice. Uh, and you can see it's pretty crisp. Uh, and I think we can place that one. But I'm actually going to go ahead and click on a different one that I think will be even easier to place. Notice that I've actually highlighted them in the folder. It's a really good idea to go through and just one by one look at the images and highlight the ones that are really good or copy them into a separate folder or something. But this one's really good and it's got some good features like this L shape here and this little uh, body of water of rancid looking water. Uh, and you notice that sort of L shape is right here. And I've sort of seen the site before so I know a little bit about it, but it's, a, it's pretty useful to, to have one of those sort of little spots that you can recognize. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Upload. And uh, we're gonna have a feature soon such that um, uh, you know, if there's GPS data in the photograph, um, it will auto, it'll offer to auto place it for you. Uh, by the time you watch this video, that feature may exist already. Um, but a lot of cameras don't have that, so we're going to do it the manual way. Um, it's uploaded. It says place image. I'm going to click that. And then our image is here on the page. I can drag it around. This is actually a really good time to switch to a tablet if you're into that, or if you have a group of people. Um, because uh, you can put it down in the center of the table and use your fingers, and that's sort of very convenient. So I, I went ahead and I clicked, and I switched. You can switch back and forth between these two modes, distortion and rotation. When it's in rotate, the corners will be red. And what I want to do is just line this up. Uh, and I think we're going to have to zoom out a little bit. So I'm using the scroll wheel here. I'm zooming. And you can see. Uh, this curve here is the same as that road. This L is the same as this L, and this body of water is the same as here. The photo is not from the same time period, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but I think we're ready to turn transparency on and start getting even better at lining up. I'm going to say that I think that this path lines up here, which means that the image has got to be a little bigger. I'll bring it over here. And again, a lot of stuff may have changed between when the photo was taken and uh, you know the image that we're seeing, but the idea is to try to um, get
get it as close as we can. So you can actually also double click to change the mode. I'll show you that. Um, and then you can begin, I'm in distortion mode now, and I'm just sort of dragging this around. I want to see this sort of elf or this sort of wiggly feature. And I think that, I'm, I'm going to guess that that is actually this feature here. That may or may not be a good guess. I mean, we can double check that later um, by uh, comparing to the other imagery. And in fact, now that I see that, it really pulls this other end out of, the, out of whack. So I'm going to undo that and say that maybe it's more like that. This could be further out that way. And really, you're not going to know whether it's a perfect match till later. Uh, because um, because you want to look at how the other images fit up with this, but uh, and notice I went into outline mode there. You can make it quite transparent. Uh, we're eventually going to make it so that you can just see the outside, and you can use hotkeys for this. So that's actually pretty nice. You press the letter O and swap back and forth. But this is a pretty good match. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. These lines are sort of lining up here, and this is pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lock it in place. And I can go back and, and uh, upload a second image. Uh, if I need help, there's a little chat window here, which will load up. And you can talk to other people who may be hanging out there from the public lab community to get help. And when you're, really, when you're done, so you, you can actually already uh, embed this. Uh, the embed code is here, uh, or the embeddable URL. and uh, but um, if you want a printable version, you can run this export. I'm not going to run it, but uh, you can change the resolution that you want and so forth, and you can get a JPEG or a GeoTIFF out of that. So that's about it for uh, this crash course. And uh, you know, I think uh, if there's one thing you remember about this, it's that um, uh, it's really helpful to have just a few very large images as opposed to uh, lots and lots of small low, low altitude images. So when you're out there mapping, just uh, do your best to um, you know, fly as high as you can. Uh, have fun map knitting and uh, join the mailing list at publiclab.org slash lists to get further help. Thank you.